to find a distant deserted island, one never explored by you. One without cell service or even one single human track. And from that moment you set your foot on that beach, it doesn't matter how you got there. What matters is savoring every moment while you're there. And that's what gives you a memory for life. And to us, that's how to live. Wow, that brings back such an awesome memory. But before we go there in this episode, there are so many other cool things that happened. Let's start there. All right, where did we leave off the last episode? Oh yeah, we were in Bimini and we were about to take off to go to the inner part of the Bahamas, the Exumas. But before we left, we were able to hang out on one of the cool beaches facing the U.S. There, we were able to hang out with some really cool people, some fantastic boats, and this is one of them. And remember, there's always a bigger boat. You know, every once in a while you get a comment like, oh, it must be nice, or, or wow, look at that trust fund kid. In all reality, most of the people we meet out here, they're just real people living the American dream, and so many grew up just as modest as I did. And it's so refreshing to see. So we say, live your own American dream. Heck, it might look like this one, or it might look a little different. All right, now it's time to check the surface drives on this 80-foot sun seeker with its built-in hookah. Just because you can, and well, I've had a couple of beers. a beached whale well at 47 go ahead and pull yourself up in the back ramp of a mega yacht and as the day winds down we head back to the hotel for the last night in Bimini and I don't remember making this clip apparently our last dinner before leaving Bimini was ramen noodles cooked out of a coffee maker it does work so the next morning is time to fuel up and I wouldn't typically put in, you know, fueling a boat up in one of my videos, but this is really important. This is actually a pretty good lesson uh, for the trip. Just because an island in the Bahamas has a gas station doesn't mean that they actually have fuel. So be prepared to maybe bounce around a little bit and always make sure you have a little bit in your tank. Also, this is why you want a fuel efficient boat. And this is why these outboard cats are actually really good for island hopping because they're really fuel efficient. I burn like 2.1, 2.2 miles a gallon at over 90 miles an hour, which is insane for a boat. Anybody ever else have that problem where you're at idle speed and you just can't place a smell? Yeah, well that happened on this trek to the gas station. Something stinks. Give him a salute and act normal. No. Nope. Is this? I, I put okay. my nose right down on this, and this smells this, gamey. This smells like bad feet. Yes, like yes, feet yes. All here, but the mat there and there doesn't smell like okay. it. Okay. <laughs> you're in the Bahamas. You wear shorts, you know, here and there, and you just try to clean them, wash them while you're doing some some snorkeling. It's not you, but honey. I'm like thinking it's me. <laughs> I'm like I've never smelled that bad in my life, even when I was playing football. And Sarah said, yeah, we left the dive bag out last night on the back deck. And I think the dive bag just got bleh. It like, is. I can smell the sea deck. It needs a fresh, it needs a fresh like, water and some sunlight. Like stinky feet. All right, so we're going to get on a plane. You can see Robbie is in front of us right now. We're doing a time lapse on that. We're just going to start to get on a plane. We're going to meet Robbie there because Robbie's a gas hog. He has bigger tanks than us. So we're just going to try to beat him over there. Sneak, you'll see him. He's over here. We're going to sneak by him. And then, and then we're going to try to get to the fuel before him. Little tricks of the trade. Should I take that flag down? And little did I know, Robbie was waiting for me to not pay attention. Oh, oh my God. 
Hmm, I should have known. This camaraderie that we have, it's the best friendship I have in voting, and I love every second of it. And uh, yeah, I let them win every time. <laughs> Honey, your feet stink. Nope, not me. Hey, you used to be able to smell your own feet. I'm, I'm old and inflexible now. Yeah. What's that like? <laughs> Honey, I've decided that I'm not yet old. I decided that I'm not old, I'm just older. Yeah. We're in the older stage, we're just older. You're an event. The event ends. The event starts and it ends. And you're an event, you're a collection of molecules all interacting, you're a chemical reaction, a very complicated chemical reaction, and, and you're an event. And you just try to keep that event together as long as possible. So after some deep thought philosophy, which often happens through the Noake Zone, we pull in where we fueled up a couple days before and there's no fuel and there's only two fueling stations in Bimini. So we have to turn around and go back to Big Game Club and hopefully they have fuel or we're going to be in trouble. So I guess at the end of the day the lesson is when in the Bahamas, keep your boat full of fuel as much as possible and top off whenever you can. So I don't think I've ever seen anybody explain how you can maneuver these cats in tight areas with these really separate motors. So here it is, it's actually fairly intuitive, but you don't use your steering wheel. You use your throttles and you use your shift levers and that's Zero it. Zero turn here. For those people that know what I do, it's kind of like a track vehicle. We're doing a zero turn. Depending on what motor you have, you can see my throttles. I'm actually twisting my reverse throttle a little bit more. Um, so, Stop to spin. So that's what we got. So we just did a zero turn. We what we did was we put one motor forward, one motor reverse, pretty standard. And then I ended up adjusting the throttles for which one I wanted to kind of spin more for the front, or maybe more pull more for the back. Adjustments. Just like a just like a rip saw. You're feeling up at the dock and look at this. Good distance. It's a, it's a fountain. Serious injury. Before you know it, we are sadly leaving Bimini for bigger and better adventures into the Exumas. There's just something about leaving port for a new adventure that just really makes you happy. And here we are, we just settled in. We don't know what's going to happen. The unexpected. And that's what makes it so exciting. We left our portable radio on, my bad, the battery's dead, that's bad. This boat does have a, um, a uh, hard fixed radio though, so we're gonna go with that. But that makes me nervous, I don't like that, so that sucks. Um, we are doing a 95 mile ocean crossing right now, to from Bimini to Chubb Key. Life jackets, I've got my ankle brace on. Hugely important to wear your ankle bracelet, um, kill switch on something like this, because nobody's around, you go out of your boat, because you hit a bump, your boat's still going miles away. Now, if I at least get out, if, if I'm, we are bumped out of the boat, we have a chance the boat will come to an idle or come to a stop and we'll be able to swim to it. So, uh, very important to have the ankle bracelet on, kill switch, and then what else? And this part of the trip is my most favorite when it came to the boating part of the Bimini trip. Coming over, we had a rough ride. But the great part about the Bahamas is once you get to Bimini, you can find shallower water pretty much anywhere you go. And we just opened her up and it was a fantastic run for us. Roll, roll baby, roll and roll. All right, here's what we're gonna talk about, a little bit of a touchy subject, and that is cat versus V-Haul. Now I know that there's plenty of cat guys out there, plenty of deep V guys out there. It's kind of like Ford versus Chevy. But at the end of the day, I've actually owned deep Vs and cats. And each of these boats fits its own function perfectly. And for these cats, well, there's three things that make them kick ass. Number one, they are fast AF. Number two, they're really fuel efficient. 
And number three, if you're under three feet of sea and you get on top, they're the most comfortable ride on the face of the earth. Now I know we crossed from Miami to Bimini and you wouldn't have said that. But remember, those seas were five to six feet. If you're below three feet in these, you know, 40 foot or 30 foot cats and you get on top, it's like a magic carpet ride and you just haul ass. So here's how it happened for real, no embellishing. Robbie and I, we were about, well, about 45 minutes behind the rest of the pack because we were late to fuel up. But that's how we like it. That's the most fun with a cat. When everyone takes off in front of you and you can catch up from behind, and we could see them from about 10 to 20 miles out. And we knew we were gonna pass them like they were sitting still. And it felt so good to come up through the pack, me and Robbie side by side, and we split the pack like a deck of cards. One of the best feelings on earth. We got the red and rolled to a pack of boats. Starting way behind, we killed up late. I'm looking over and seeing my buddy. Such a good feeling, I got chills. Yeah! There's Rob, look at that. Now that I've had my testosterone release, we can chill out and go to our first stop. Oh wait, Robbie hasn't had his full testosterone release yet. Just on cue, Robbie sneaks up behind us like a big great white shark. Oh my god, I thought we were pulling in the Chub Key. This was supposed to be a chill moment. Alright, where were we? I always get distracted on all these episodes. Alright, Chub Key. Here we are, rolling in beautiful epic scenery with like really chill music. We show up in one of the coolest little keys called Chub Key. It's one of my most favorite and actually beautiful keys that we stopped at. And here it is. We'll just roll video because it speaks for itself. exploring new places it's the first time on my eyes and that's what I love about exploring look at this it's almost like we're discovering something for the first time technically we're discovering it for ourselves this is how to live you guys not technically like how to live here but this is how to live in my opinion you know just take the resources you do have and, and that's why we kind of named the channel like that it's not about it's not about like a certain specific way how to live it's more of an attitude and like taking what you have and everyone has different things. I grew up pretty poor, so there's many times in my life we just made it work. How many times did we go camping with no money and just grab the resources that we had? had the best time. And had the best time exploring new places and, and new land and seeing things for the first time. You can do it in a great boat or you can do it in a skiff. We've done it. We've done it a pontoon boat. Do it with sneakers. See what's around your house and take a hike to some 
place you had not been. Explore. That's why, that's what it's about for us. It's about, you know, how to live. It's just taking every day, like it's your last in a way, and getting out there and just seeing cool stuff. I love this. Look at this. Well, rolling in a Chub Key with, well, probably the smallest boat in the marina put things in perspective. We're definitely not the biggest boat here by even a long shot. But to us, none of that matters. What matters is that we do have a platform to get here. And we do have the sense of adventure. And that, to me, is worth more than any boat or any cottage or any land you can buy. So what exactly is Chub Key? Well, Chub Key is part of the Barry Islands of the Bahamas, and it actually only has a population of 46, according to the census back in 2010. So it's a very small island, and it's also privately owned. Now, what Chub Key is known for is its world-class bill fishing. It's one of the best in the Bahamas, if not the world. It has a very deep shelf off the inside, which allows for fantastic fishing, as well as clear water diving. Chub Key is also known for something called the Clubhouse. This is one of the coolest buildings I've seen in the Bahamas. It's brand new and it's absolutely beautiful. This is where we had lunch. It has a fantastic pool overlooking the beach. And we just had a great time here before we took off to NASA. Well, I'm going to put this in here because this was truly my first time to chill in about three days. So it was only for about a half an hour, but I let everything go. After I did this quick filming, I dropped the camera and I just enjoyed myself. And that brings up another subject I wanted to kind of answer some questions about. You know, a lot of people are like, hey, do you do all the editing? And the answer is yes, I do. It's definitely um, a lot of work. Two hours per one minute of film is what I spend on these. So it's a lot of time, a lot of late nights after work, but you know what? It's what I enjoy. So I wanna thank everybody out there for making it worth it for me to put this time in and, uh, and truly enjoy what we do. And there's one more thing I wanted to point out about editing. I think you'll probably notice from our other videos that the music and the score is so important to us. It sets the tone and it sets the emotion of the content. And this is often how we pick the score. And yep, it's licensed music. All right, how about this one? Yeah, that'd be good for just like Nikki, this said this one's smooth. Yeah. That one's good. You think that's top pop? You think that's top pop, Yukon? Most of the work with doing these videos is actually right here. It's editing, going through all the terabytes of footage, but it's also picking the right score. And, um, I'm pretty critical with that. It needs to have a good score. And so I'll sit here for hours and days and uh, with my little helpers. I think this one's a pretty good one. I'm going to put this one in the top pop yeah. folder. Yeah. It's just smooth, right? Yeah, it's just like it's just, happy. It's just like it's got a groove to it. Yeah. Right? Wow, okay. That was one heck of a tangent. My ADHD kicking in again. But here's the thing. I don't mind because it did answer some questions. And now we can move on. We are going to be leaving Chub Key any second, and we're going to be pushing to NASA, where the adventures even get bigger and cooler, and we dive with sharks, camp on deserted islands. So let's switch gears and get out of Chub and get to NASA. All right, ready for high-speed operation. Okay, we need to get rid of this camera, that camera. So we're just going to try to get ahead of the pack, not try to get our windshield wet. We're looking at a lot of, a lot of boats here. So this crossing from Chub Key to Nassau can actually be uh, pretty nasty as well. It's only about 43 miles. You go over really, really deep water into the five, six, seven thousand foot mark. So that really allows that wind to blow up, and it certainly did that day. Basically, we were in threes to fours most of the time, and you can see it. Look at these V-hulls behind us. 
That is a 42-foot scout, and even he's getting tossed around as we pass him. So about 10 minutes into this leg, something happened. I decided, you know what, I'm not going to play prevent defense anymore. I'm not going to drive this boat like I think it's going to break every two seconds, which is what I've been doing for the last three days. I'm going to give it some, and I'm going to drive the boat like we usually drive it at every other fun run. The reason we're not doing it on this trip is just because we're so far away from our country. We didn't want to break. But at some point, I just gave up, and I said, you know what, let's operate. We threw the throttles down, and we had one of the best times getting on top of these threes to fours and ended up, honestly, about five miles to ten miles in front of everybody behind us. And it was such an awesome feeling to have this boat finally perform like I wanted it to from day one, but I was just a little bit too hesitant. What's crazy is that these seas that you see now are the same exact seas that we started out, and this is only five minutes later. But instead of doing 40 or 50 miles an hour, we're doing 80 to 90, and we're just barely touching the tops. This is the most I've ever pushed this boat in kind of like a three to four foot sea, and it was just awesome. We just ended up pulling away from everybody. It was just a magical moment for me and my wife after being three days of just prevent defense, totally smiling and giggling with a good time. And it's because we finally pushed this boat to what it's designed for. Lord's telling me to not be so cocky. Our electronics go black. Our garments go from day mode to night mode and we can't see a thing and we're rolling into Nassau Harbor at 95 miles an hour uncharted territory. Things get real. What? I can't see honey. What happened? I, I don't know. so mad at Garmin I'm like why do you have a, a screen go from daytime to nighttime just like that for no reason and it, they went black we couldn't see anything and Sarah was such an awesome wife she just struggled through it and she found basically a bunch of menu items to get to where we needed to get to to get that screen lit back up but man it was tense Grab the as fast as you can. 
And my sweet victory, after three days of Robbie passing me every two seconds I wasn't paying attention, was to pop the bean bags out, put them on the bow, and hang out in the harbor like we were chilling out with a suntan before they even got there. Oh my god, I know that just pissed off so many people, but I, guys, I gotta keep it real and I gotta keep it funny. So, let's move on. And moving on is wrapping it up. And I know you guys have probably had your dinner or your break is over, so that's an episode, man. 20 minutes, 20, 25 minutes. I'm really sorry we couldn't get into more content, like feeding sharks. It's not for sure lot. Um, you know, the cool camping we did on deserted islands, but at the end of the day guys it's coming it's going to be just more episodes episode four and episode five and episode six maybe i don't know we'll do something like fast and the furious franchise maybe we can roll this out to 12 episodes hey it all comes down to the content i'm going to try to keep it as full as possible and we love you guys keep watching stay tuned go to the facebook for our merch boat safe boat happy over and out and a little sneak peek of episode four as i said before I was unable to harvest a fish today. We had a lot going on. Gave it to the barracuda by mistake. So we're gonna we're gonna do beef jerky instead. Throw some beef jerky in there for the protein. I've done this before beef jerky and some ramen noodles. So good. Eat it as you cook. Hey, you want some? <laughs> you want some beef jerky in there? Uh, just just a little bit. Just like one or two pieces. Okay. Oh, or the whole bag. Okay. This is gonna be so good. All right, high quality teriyaki for dinner. Teriyaki ramen noodles. With a side of high blood pressure. Look at this, you guys. We're gonna let that simmer. You might not be able to serve this at a restaurant, but it's about the, the ambiance, okay? All right, try the nudes. I do love my carbs.